Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to color grade with curves in Photoshop. So curves are amazing for color correction, and that's often what they're used for. But curves can actually be used to color grade an image as well. And what do I mean by color grade? By color grade, I mean give an image a different color look. So often you see this with presets. I also have tutorials on how to do it with gradient maps. But curves are an amazing tool for doing color grading. Now, if you want to follow along as you go in this tutorial, just go down to the description. I have a link in there. You can download all the assets to follow along. Let's get started. Okay, before we dive into color grading with curves, I want to show you a brief overview of the curves palette. So let's go to File, Open. We're going to open this sample image. I'm going to disattach it like this and just put it in this corner here and make it a bit smaller. I'm going to do Command, Spacebar, Option, and just click a couple times. There you go. All right, now we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Curves, which is Command-M. Always learn your shortcuts. Command-M is Curves. All right, so the basics of curves, if you drag it up, it makes the image lighter. If you drag it down, it makes it darker. The top of the curve is your light areas. The bottom of your curve is your dark areas. This, commonly referred to as an S-curve, will make your image more contrasty and if you want to get rid of these simply drag them outside of the window if you want to make your whole image just darker click in the middle and drag down if you want to make your whole image lighter click in the image drag up that is the basics of curves and a few other things to know here these you can keep on the defaults we're not going to get into all that right now Although I will note that if you're dragging down and it's making the image lighter, that's because pigment is turned on instead of light. So if that's happening, just switch it to light. All right. And these three here, those are good to know. The black means you can select the black point in your image and it'll correct the whole image based on that black point. Uh, we're going to reset this. So to reset, that's actually one of the few things that's kind of hidden in here. You need to hold down the Option button and then your Cancel button becomes a reset. So reset. This one, you can select a gray area of your image and color correct the whole image with one click. Let's see which part of this image is most likely gray. Well, maybe this part. Nope. Maybe this part. Yeah. And if you click around your image, it'll just reset the curve. So you can do this as many times. Like right there, that actually got rid of the whole color cast on the whole image. If I uh, turn the preview on and off here, you can see that's color corrected the whole image just by using that color thing. Now you'll notice now you can see different colored lines in your curves. This is important for color grading because for color grading, we're actually going to dive into our other channels. RGB affects just the lightness, darkness of your whole image. Red is where you're going to affect the red colors, not the red colors, but the redness of your image, the greenness of your image and the blueness of, it, of your image. Okay, so that's the curves palette. Let's cancel out of that and remember the shortcut, Command M, okay? Always remember your shortcuts. Let's cancel out of that. I'm going to show you one more thing, which is down here, if I click, I can add a curve here. And you'll notice that we pretty much have the same palette, but with a few of the tools moved around. So now our eyedropper tools are here, and our show options are hidden in here. So curve display options, that's where those options are. Again, you really don't need those, so let's cancel out of that. One last thing to show you is this here allows you to select in your image where you want to adjust your curve. Now look at the curves palette there, and look as I drag around that dot that's moving around. So if I know I want to affect the dark area of her cheek here, I can click, drag up to make it lighter, 
drag down to make it darker. Now, I'll need more than one point because one point is affecting the whole curve. So maybe I go in the light area, drag that back down. And the more points you have, um, the more control you have of your curve. All right, that's all you need to know about the curves palette before we dive into color grading with curves. Let's do that now. All right, let's go file, open. We're gonna take the shark composite. This is a composite I did of my daughters swimming with some sharks. Now you can see all the elements that I added into the composite are neutral, but in order to make this composite more integrated, feel like it all got taken as one photo, what I wanna do is I wanna add a color grade. So let's put this in the corner here and let's add a curves layer. Now, before I add the curves layer, I'm actually gonna open my color palette and I'm gonna detach that so it stays open and click over here and make sure it's on color wheel, okay? I believe the default is hue cube, so just change that to color wheel. And the advantage of this is that you actually have a color wheel full open all the time. <clears throat> now, why is that important? Well, when you're color grading, you need to know what the opposites are. And the opposite of green here is magenta, the opposite of red is cyan, and the opposite of blue is yellow. All right, now let's get into our curves. So I'm gonna detach this, put it up here so I can see my color wheel as I'm adjusting my curve. All right, so what I know I want is I want this whole image to be more blue and I want the whole underwater to be more cyan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to red because the opposite of red is cyan. And I'm gonna take my hold, the bottom of my curve here and drag it down quite a bit, all the way to like there. And I don't want the top areas here to be as affected, right? Cause now we're getting too much cyan in the skin. It's starting to look green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top of the curve, drag it back up. So it's kind of straight up here. You can see right away that's better there. And now what I'm gonna do is go to blue. So it's still too green. So how do we get rid of yellow? Well, look at yellow and look at blue. So what we need to do is we need to pull up the blue, which is gonna get rid of the yellow. So let's pull up the blue. And there you can see some of our yellow is going away. Now I do want some yellow in the skin tone. So just at the top here, the light areas, I'm gonna drag this back down. So right about there. And maybe, maybe we want a little bit of magenta in this blue. So how do we add magenta? Well, magenta, the opposite is green. So let's go to our green channel. We're gonna just drag this down a little bit here. But I don't want magenta, there's too much magenta in the skin here. So again, we're just gonna drag the top of the curve back up. Good, so there you have it. And if I click on this, you can see the before and after. You can see the whole image looks far more integrated now. We did all that with just one curves layer. All right, let's tackle another image. I'm gonna go to file open again. And I'm going to open Lady Fox Composite. Let's detach that. All right, now notice when I drag it up here, it wants to uh, attach itself. To avoid that, as you're dragging it there, just hold down the command. There you go. All right, let's add our curves layer. This is a composite I did for one of my premium courses, and I'll leave a description in the link, but I have a course that takes you through the entire workflow of creating this composite including adding these little dust motes here, adding all the butterflies, the fox, um, and actually changing the entire color of her dress, adding a background, adding some light rays, all of that covered in one course. Highly recommend it. All right, so after I added all these images, 
to this composite, I wanted to give it a strong color grade, kind of give it almost a painted look, like almost a Rembrandt-y look. So what I'm gonna do is I want to add a lot of blue to the shadow areas and make this whole kind of background a creamish color. So yellow, a bit of red. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we do is go to our blue channel. And because I want to add blue to the darks, I'm going to take the bottom of the curve and drag it up. Now you can see it's adding blues to the highlights. So let's take the top of the curve and drag it down. So to right about there. And then I'm going to kind of do a inverted S curve here. Wow, I mean, look at the difference. Boom, the whole thing has a cool look. But this is too green, so why is it too green? Why? Because there's cyan in the yellow, cyan in the highlights. So how do we get rid of cyan? Red. Look again, cyan, red. All right, so in this area. Now, this is a great place to use this right here. If I click on that and go over here, it's gonna show me exactly where I've got too much cyan, and I can click on that and just drag up a bit. Maybe I wanna do just kind of in the highlights there. And I do like the cyan in here because it's giving it that nice turquoise look. So I'm gonna drag the cyan back down here just kind of play with these two spots until I'm getting the look that I want. That's really nice right there. So there you go. Before, after. Again, just one curve is giving us that whole color grade right there. All right, lastly, we're gonna do one more composite. This is Lady uh, Fairy Composite. This is another course that I did. Um, and again, this is actually the course I recommend to um, everyone, everyone who asks me which is the course I should start with. You can start with any course, but this one is the most comprehensive. It's two hours of training, and in it you learn everything to put together this composite, including how to create the glass distortion, how to add the scratches, how to add smoke, how to add the flames on the candle, how to create a second copy of a candle so that you can add that element into your foreground, how to cut out a person, um, even how to do frequency separation. It's all covered in this course. All right, after I finish my composite, again, in order to give it that illustrative look, uh, make it look more fantasy, less realistic, I want to give the whole thing a color grade and in this case I want to give it like a nice purple look into the shadows and then make the highlights warm so let's go to curves and purple is going to be adding blue and then adding some magenta so we're going to be playing with the green curve and the blue curve primarily let's go to blue I'm going to pull that up quite a bit. Right about there. If I pull this too much, we're losing our black. So I don't want to pull that too much, but I do want it more blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the bottom up to there and then pull more of it up here. And But I want my lighter areas to stay warm. So I'm going to drag this down a little bit like way to there kind of keep it straight after be careful of your curve inverting itself because that's going to have some not so nice effects here's what happens if the curve inverts itself you can see the whole image starts to break so let's go there there maybe a little bit higher here That's pretty nice. All right, let's go to the green. Add some magenta in there. I kind of like, I kind of like what it's doing by just adding magenta overall because it's giving me a nice 
pink wormy look while also making my shadows purple. That's quite nice there. And then in this one, I actually may give the whole thing just a little bit of an S curve. Punch up that contrast a bit. All right, before, after. See, the whole thing has now a color grade. And the beauty of having a adjustment layer is that I can click on the mask, go in my paint tool, and then paint out areas using black that I don't want affected by that color grade. All right, there you have it. That's how you color grade with curves in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I put out new tutorials. I put out a new tutorial at least once a week. You'll see them on Monday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Otherwise, I did mention that I have some premium courses on Photoshop compositing. I'll put a link in the description for those courses. I also have premium assets for graphic designers, digital artists, and photographers. I'll also include a link for those. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Here's some other videos to check out.